Hi everyone. Today we'll be talking about high yield antibiotics. So I'm going to be mentioning a clinical presentation and then go ahead and try to guess the antibiotic that I'm talking about. All right, let's get started. So the first one is a drug used to treat syphilis or strep throat. So this is penicillin. The next one causes redness, itching, flush skin after fast infusion of the medication. This is gonna be vancomycin causing red man syndrome. The next one is an irreversible 30S inhibitor and the patient can develop ringing in the ears, increase B1 and creatinine, as well as numbness and tingling. So these are the aminoglycosides such as gentamicin, tobramycin, and imikicin. So really important side effects for this are going to be the autotoxicity, nephrotoxicity, and neurotoxicity. The next one is a drug class that blocks transpeptidase cross-linking of peptidoglycan in the cell wall. So these are the beta-lactams, including penicillin, cephalosporin, carbapenems, and aztreonam. The next one is an antibiotic used to treat listeria. So this is ampicillin. The next one is a penicillin used to treat pseudomonas. This is piperacillin. The next one's a cephalosporin used to treat meningitis and gonorrhea. This is ceftriaxone. The next ones are cephalosporins used to treat pseudomonas. This is ceftazidime and cefepime. The next one is an antibiotic class that causes seizures. So this, these are the carbapenems. The next one is given with beta-lactams to increase the killing of bacteria. Okay, so these are the aminoglycosides and this concept is known as synergy. So when you give a beta-lactam and aminoglycosides together, it increases their effects. The next one's a cell wall inhibitor that can cause autotoxicity and nephrotoxicity. This is vancomycin. The next antibiotic can develop resistance due to amino acid modification of d ala d ala to d ala d lac So this is vancomycin once again. The next one are drugs used to treat watery diarrhea after antibiotic use or recent hospitalization. Okay, so this can be oral vancomycin or fidoxamycin. Now the clinical vignette here is describing a patient that has C. diff diarrhea and you want to use one of these two medications to treat it. The next one is contraindicated in myasthenia gravis due to neuromuscular blockade. So these are the aminoglycosides, and again, you don't want to give this to a patient with myasthenia gravis. The next one is a reversible 30S inhibitor that causes gray teeth photosensitivity, and there's decreased drug absorption with calcium, magnesium, and iron. So these are the tetracyclines and the de decreased drug absorption here happens with divalent cations such as foods containing calcium such as milk um, also with antacids um, so you want to avoid you know eating food and also taking this medication and this similar effect can also happen with fluoroquinolones as well. The next one is a 50S inhibitor that causes gray baby syndrome. 
This is chloramphenicol. The next one's a 50S inhibitor used to treat anaerobic infections and causes C. diff colitis. This is clindamycin. The next one's a 50S inhibitor that can treat MRSA and VRE, and it causes serotonin syndrome and hypertensive crisis. This is linezolid. So you want to be careful when you give this drug with another drug that increases serotonin, for example, SSRIs or SNRIs. And you have to be careful when you eat a tyramine containing food, such as uh, red meat, wine, or cheese, because it can increase the blood pressure leading to a hypertensive crisis. The next one inhibits the 23S of the 50S subunit and it treats atypical pneumonia and chlamydia, and it can cause a prolonged QT interval. So these are the macrolides. Now they all end in thromycin, such as azithromycin, clarithromycin, and erythromycin. The next one treats UTIs, pneumocystis pneumonia and toxoplasmosis prophylaxis in AIDS patients, and it can cause kernicterus in babies. So this is TMP SMX, and we give these together to treat all these conditions. The next one is a leprosy treatment. This is Dapsone. The next one prevents DNA replication by inhibiting topoisomerase, DNA gyrase, and it causes prolonged QT interval and also tendon and muscle damage. So this is the fluoroquinolones, and all of these drugs have a floxacin ending, such as levofloxacin. The next one causes DNA damage to treat giardia, bacterial vaginosis, and trichomoniasis, and it can cause a disulfiram-like reaction with alcohol and a metallic taste. So this is metronidazole. The next are two antibiotics that shouldn't be taken with calcium, magnesium, or iron due to decreased absorption of the drug. So this is the tetracyclines and the fluoroquinolones, like I was mentioning before. And the last one is going to be H. pylori triple therapy treatment. Okay, so this is clarithromycin, amoxicillin, and a PPI such as omeprazole. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you found this really helpful. And like always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.